All right. Today is November twenty-first. Tuesday. I just sorry about that. Just like to have a quick trading lessons, random shows. Um, now, first thing first, if you like to listen to the audio instead of watching my YouTube, because I did get some complaints from the members who wants to actually listen to it. You know, I know I understand some people have to commute. And、uh, for me personally, I love podcast. I love the audio version of everything. So I do have SoundCloud right now. It's right here, SoundCloud.com. Everything slash at Enho Cool. I'll try to get on the podcast、uh, from iTunes as well. If I do that, I will let you know for sure. But as for now, you can go on SoundCloud to listen to my weekly analysis video. And also、uh, random trading lesson videos as well. Okay, so today I want to talk about a very simple concept. You know, as you see the title, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Now, of course, this is from a famous novel, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickson, and I do find a resonant、uh, with that our our current generation and this time. And that comes down to why I encourage people to learn trading. It's not because trading is the solution. It's nothing to do with that. You know, in fact, a lot of people will go on this journey to learn how to trade. I don't care what you do: stock trading, forex trading, whatever it is. A lot of people will do it and fail. Okay, and fail is not a failure is not a bad thing. A lot of people do it and realize it's not for them. But regardless, I still encourage people to go through this process, and I'll come to a bigger contest. Why? I was reading an article the other day saying that the millennial,、uh, right now, is better equipped than their parent generation. So they have a better degree, better education, better health. They live longer, and yet they don't have a better life quality. They make less money. They are hardly able to own any properties without the help from their parents. They have a tremendous amount of student debt, and their job salary is just very low. You know, comparing to their parents, so most likely they are not even able to start a family or to raise kids as easily as their parents' generation. Why is it happening? You know, if they are better equipped. Why is it happening? Is it because we are at the worst of times? Let's take a look at that. Okay, so first of all, your parents' generations、uh, will give you most likely will give you advices as follows. Now, I am a millennial, so I did get a little bit of all these advices from not only from your parents. You might get it, you might get it from the school teachers. But generally speaking, they want you to study hard. Want to go to universities, and then want to get a good job. Then you should buy a house and car because you know you still be to rent, right? You need to buy. Then you should start a family right away. Then you should save money, save, save, save until you finally you can retire, and then you can enjoy life. Okay, that was the advices from your parents' generations, and I think a lot of people will share the same thing. Like the parents probably. Told them about all these advices. Now, let's look at each individual, okay, one by one. Because I wouldn't say your parents are wrong. You know, I don't think that way. I think the biggest reason why the millennial are better equipped, but seems to have less outcome, is because we are using the old rules in these new games. So your parents' advices worked in the past. Those rule works in the past in the old games, but right now the game had completely changed. Why? It's because the invention of internet. Ever since the invention of internet, you do understand we are no longer in the industrialized、uh, generations.、So、this is the digital age. Means all the advices that your parents had given you, you know, it, the, first of all, they. Your parents mean well. Okay, they really have the best intention for you to succeed in this life. So, you know, no matter how、um, 
illogic that advice is my my sin nowadays you know don't blame them you know it's it's the best they know so those advices are not wrong in the bad past generations but right now the game had completely changed because of the invention of internet so they want you to study hard versus i think you should learn to think because study hard has nothing to do with learning how to think you know if you look at the past uh, the best students is often the one with the best memory. Okay, that's the why it was the best memory because they they will do well on tests and exams, and hence they'll have a better score to go to the better university. And also before, we don't really have access to information. So what happened is that person who have the biggest brain capacity, right? Who can really memorize things, of course they have a better age. But nowadays, everybody can get information with a click of your phone. You just go on Google, and there's an answer. That means that having a good memory is not a necessary tool to succeed anymore. So study hard you know, to cram those knowledge into your brain is not as useful as learning how to think, especially thinking outside the box. Right? And those things are very, very hard to learn in a traditional setting of school environment just because the school environment is still the exactly same formula uh, as the industrial industrialized generations right they're still trying to train people to become a good employees and that's why it stopped working well in this generation right now second advice they ask you to go to university now I do not think education uh, is not important. No, on the contrary, I think education is definitely very important. However, once again, because of the internet, right now the knowledge is hugely accessed from online, from online a library, or even from online university. You don't really need to go to university anymore in order to learn. Right, you have to understand back then without the internet, yes, your professors and the schools have all the information. So unfortunately, you do have to go to those places in order to learn. But nowadays, you can learn everything. You can learn everything online. Now, that's not only the case. You got to look at the cost. So what's the cost for you to go to online college, an online course? It's very, very relatively low. But what's the cost of university? If you look at a trend, it's getting even you know so ridiculous right now. The student fees, everybody graduate from university without a help, right? If you don't have any help from your parents, you're going out of university like you are having a house mortgage, and you know the things you're getting, you you can really uh, pretty much get the same thing from internet, right? The only thing that's different is that degree. So your graduate after four years without any help means you're you're having a mortgage like a house mortgage, and the worst is that your house mortgage you can get away, you can escape, you can claim bankrupt, but not the student loan, not the student loan. So you're already in a very disadvantaged position if you are having as a young man, you graduate twenty two, twenty three years old already have this like 20 30 years of mortgage where you can just learning all the knowledge from online right that's the part of learning now i do agree that if you go to university you should social as much as you can and learn about life i think that's really uh, the main point of university it's not where you go to learn a skill to be honest every knowledge you learn in a university is just a common knowledge it's not a special knowledge University is really a place for you to prepare to become a full adult into a society. So really learning about life instead of learning about the skill of knowledge to get a job. Because if you want to do that, you should go to trade school to really learn a skill that you have a better chance. Okay, now it comes down to the third one. After you go to university, what's the biggest difference is, of course, you're going to get a degree. Now, back then, degree means jobs, right? If you have a good degree, it means you get a good job. You know, in my dad's generation, uh, where in my country, you have these military uh, duties. And if you are a university graduate, you immediately, 
is going to be a higher ranking officers, right? That's how much people value the university education back then. And now, is that the case nowadays? Definitely not. Now you heard a lot of news. A lot of people graduate not only from university, they're from the graduate program or even PhD. They couldn't get a job. Why? First of all, because jobs or good jobs are not that available anymore. Second thing is that everyone has a university degrees. So unless you are from Ivy League, even if you're from Ivy League universities, unless you are in a special program, something that's really high demand. If you are in something like liberal arts, you know,、um, history things like that, then fortunately your degree is great, but it's not really gonna lend you、uh, any good jobs. Now, now look at what I just said from the, the top three. So not only you go to school to study hard instead of learning how to think, you go to university. With, if you are lucky, with somebody pay. You see, it's case by case, right? I would never say it's a black and white things. If you have somebody pay for you as a tuition, now that that's a hard rea- a hard truth reality. Of course, if somebody paying for you, then yeah, you should go to university. Why not? You know, it's a great place.、Uh, again, like I say, it's a great place to learn. But if you have to go on loan. All on your own for this thirty, you know, fifty grand, hundred grand in debt just to get that degree. And worst of all is that if that degree is something to do with liberal arts, man, you are in a very disadvantaged position because you are be you'll be graduating with, you know, like a history degree with let's say sixty sixty thousand dollars in debt. Really, what you're gonna do about it, right? That's 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 not a good place to be. And third thing is that after you graduate, your parents will ask you to buy a house, if you can, right? If you get a job, you should buy a house. Why? Because you should never rent, right? That's their concept. You should never rent. Renting is for suckers, you know. Why you want to make your landlord rich? Now, you have to understand, buying a house or or buying anything can be good or bad. It's really depend on if you're buying an asset or if you're buying a liability. Now, if you read the books "Rich Dad and Poor Dad," it's very, very, it's a great book, very straightforward concept. But if you are buying something that's going to bring you cash flow, then yes, it's an asset. If you're buying something that you have to pay for it, it's a liability. So your car, of course, if you have to pay for a car loan, it's a liability. If a house you have to pay for mortgage on your own, it's a liability. Now back then, people buy house for the simple reason: housing market will never crash. Now we all know since two thousand eight, that's definitely not the case. Everything, every asset can appreciate and depreciate. That's just a fact. It depends on economic cycle. There's no asset that's never going to crash. So of course, housing market will crash. Will go up. It depends on the timing. So this blind rule for you to follow: just buy the house, buy the house. What if you just bought a house, you know,、uh, last year、uh, in Canada, right? Right now, our housing market is corrected. It's in the correction. So whoever bought it at the beginning of this year, pretty much bought it at the highest high, and that's again not a good position to be. And、why would a lot of people do that? Because they follow their parents' advice. They're just thinking that house is great. I should buy a house. So the fourth thing your parents tell you right after that is you should start a family right away. That means you should have kids. Now this one it's more emotional. So I wouldn't. I don't really want to judge on this one because some people value so much on having a kids.、Uh, you just have to remember that raising a kid,、uh, it's very very expensive nowadays. Right back in your parents' generation, having a kid sounds like nothing. It's because literally, it's it's nothing. They don't need to spend a lot of money by raising you up. Nowadays, it's very competitive. So even if you are in a socialist country like Canada, yes, everything is free. But you want your kids to learn a lot of things. You want them to learn piano. You want them to learn play tennis. You want them to learn, you know, math things like that. You actually have to spend a lot of extra money if you want your kids to be competitive, right? And it's only fair, of course. You don't want to put your kids in a disadvantaged position. That's my personal view. So I do think, of course, you want your kids to. 
better equipped. And if that's the case, then you better be able to have a lot of resources to do that. If you, first of all, graduate already having a huge amount of student loan, and then you bought a house, have another huge amount of mortgage, then you have kids, wow, it's going to be very, very tough, right? Because you're already having so much debt. And is kids an asset or a liability? Again, it's emotion, emotional for people to uh, to say it. But for strictly mathematic point of view or financial point of view, your kids is definitely a liability upon the age of eighteen. Okay, if you're lucky, then by the time they are they turn eighteen, maybe they become the next uh, Zuckerberg. Right, maybe they become the next uh, a Snapchat uh, CEO. Okay, they become a young billionaire. Then, if you're lucky enough, or most likely, your kids will need your support even when they will be young, eighteen years old. So, your kids, of course, it's a liability. Now, we even do that when we play a cash flow game. Now, many of you, if you are uh, having a cash flow game from Rich Dad Poor Dad, you know that if you are uh, basically flip the card. Uh, and you got a kid that's considered a liability. Consider do that. So that thing your parents uh, suggest you to do is to save, right? Save, save, save. You should save money in order to retire. Now again, saving it's a good habit in the old generation, and you have to really learn to look at things in a bigger perspective, right? The reason that I, when I teach people how to trade, I always teach people basically how to think, because the market is very dynamic. So you don't want to look at the market in a single perspective. And once you learn that ability, right? Once you learn all this critical thinking from trading, that's how you apply in life, and you realize how to look at a life decision in different perspective, right? Nothing is black and white. So is saving good or bad? Well, it depends. It depends. In your parents' generation, saving is good because the interest rate is high. That's the first thing. Second thing is that you don't really have that much volatility going on, right? You heard people back then will tell you if you want to buy stocks, just buy a blue chip. Why? Because they always go up. Again, it's not the case anymore. Right now, the financial market is very dynamic. Everything pretty much after two thousand eight、uh, has. Basically, shuffle through, and now it's a new game. It's a new game. So, should you save? Definitely not. Definitely not. Because how how are you going to save against the inflation? That's just a very simple, straightforward math that if you look at, you're not going to beat the inflation with saving. So, why are you saving? What are you trying to achieve? Right. That's. A lot of people they think they're doing the right thing because they follow their parents' advice. They just save, 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 and they think that's the way to go. Why? Because their parents seems to you know work out for their parents. So again, I will encourage you to don't take my words for advice, right? But look at a big picture and judge on your own、uh, critical thinking. Should you save? The reason we save is because we can accumulate enough. Asset, right? Your cash is an asset, and then you use that asset to buy something that's either going to appreciate or going to bring you cash flow, right? It's very simple, very straightforward. Nowadays, if you save, where your interest rate is lower than the inflation, you are not getting anything out of it, and that's why in this time of the year, of course, you should not save. Would I give you the same advice five, ten years later? I don't know. It really depends on the interest rate. It really depends on how the market is doing, right? So it's not. There is no such thing as rule of thumb. The only rule of thumb is you have to learn to think, learn to think, learn to make your own decision. So should you save? Definitely, I don't think it's a good idea to save. Now, it's a good habit. Why? Because saving makes you、uh, become aware. Of where to spend your money, so I will give credit to saving because a saver has a good patient. A patient is very important.
important if you want to become rich. So you should have that、uh, habit of saving, the only because you should have the ability to be patient, to wait for a bigger reward, and to be able to、uh, be aware of where the money goes. That's the only thing why you should save. But if you want to save in order to retire, good luck with that. I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, so pretty much that's why、uh, the last thing again to retire after saving your parent generation is that then you can retire. And again, you need to ask yourself what af- what's going to happen after you retire. In your parent generation, retirement means freedom. They finally they can retire means they can finally live their life, right? They work so hard. Pay off their mortgage, pay pay off everything. The kids are growing up. Finally, they can enjoy life. Now nowadays, that's not how people treat life, right? Now you might be different, but for me, if you are sixty five and finally you get to travel for the first time in your life, I that's not my plan, right? I don't really think that's a nice life plan. Nowadays, young people want to travel. They want to have a good quality of life.、But、you have this new movement of minimalism. That's definitely because young people nowadays have a different mentality.、Uh, the millennial have different mentality than their parents' generations. So saving in order to retire is not、uh, the top priority for the millennials. Instead, people want to have money to live a good quality of life right now. Right now. So that's why I say old rules, new games. Now, what does that have to do with trading? Because trading or become a trader pretty much breaks all the advices that your parents give you. And because of that, by learning how to trade in the process of becoming good at it, you train yourself to think outside the box, to become an independent thinker than your parents'、uh, generations. And that's why I encourage people to trade, or at least to learn from. Not because you sh- you will succeed. No, it's nothing to do with that. It's just because you will gain a lot of valuable lessons、uh, by doing trading. Now, number four is you have to understand in this time of the year, who are you learning from? Who are you learning from? So, this is. Very, very important to understand. In your parents' generation, who are the millionaires? The millionaires are old people. The millionaires are people like Rockefellers. The millionaires are people who like like Carnegie, right? Those、uh, big, big、uh, manufacturers. Nowadays, who are the millionaires? Okay, not not let's not say who, nowadays who are the billionaires. The billionaires are university students who just drop out, right? The billionaires are 18 years old students. The billionaires are the next young kids. It's again, you just look around you. You realize this is a new game. So you have to understand who are you learning from. Again, I know you love your parents, and we all want to get approval from our parents. But in this game of finance or money, you really need to be careful and ask yourself. Who am I learning from? If you're taking advice from your parents、uh, for money, you have to ask yourself: Are is your parents a millionaire or multi-millionaire? Because if they are not, why would they give you a good advice? It will enable you it will enable you to become rich.、Uh, they would do that themselves long time ago, right? So. Right now, because the information is so available, you want to succeed,、uh, to become rich or financially well. You really need to learn from people who have made it, and that might be your parents. I don't know you. I don't know about you, but that definitely is not gonna be your.、Uh, most likely, it's not gonna be your high school teacher. Most likely, it's not gonna be your professors. Right? Your professor will, or high school teacher will teach you a lot of good lessons in life, but. When it comes to money, you should really learn from people who have done it, who have walked the path, and that's my advice for you. And why it's the best of time is because I think it's the best of time. It's because it's full of opportunities. 
everyone has a tremendous amount of opportunity to become the next millionaire, multimillionaire, and billionaire. It has been done many times, many days. If you read the news, it's happening every single day. However, it's the worst of time for people who don't like to think, who just like to follow other people's advice blindly, and worst of all is that who just obey whatever their parents said or the teacher said. It's gonna be the worst of time because you are using the old rules in this new game. Okay, so what's your solution? Your solution is, I think you have to understand, future is online, right? Future is in the internet, and that's the biggest biggest disruptions for our generation compared to your parents is the invention of internet. Pretty much disrupt everything you ever known. It makes university so much. So much、uh, worthwhile than before because of the internet. It makes everything completely change. So you have to understand. Watch out for what's happening in the digital age, in the digital、uh, places. Second thing is you should learn from everyone. That means nowadays you don't need to only learn from teachers or people who have a degree. People seems to have authority. No, on the contrary, learn from whoever has money. If you want to make money, right? Whoever make it, made it, you know, take advices from them. No matter how old or how young they are, it's not like before we say, "Oh, wisdom is, you know,、um, is is in is in the elders." It's not that.、Uh, it it doesn't work that way anymore, right? Nowadays,、uh, old old people is not wealthy, and wealthy people are not old. Right, that's just if you go on flight, you know. Next time, if you can, you know, you go to、uh, take a business class or first class, you, you're gonna see a lot of young kids, you know. And people say, oh, you know, those kids are、uh, second generation. Might be, yeah, most of them are, but some of them are young entrepreneurs who really made it, right? So don't ever judge a book by its cover. There's a lot of young entrepreneur who made it in this generation. So I do think it's a best of time. And、uh, third thing, of course, you want to think outside the box. You definitely don't want to, don't want to go the old way. Right? You want to think outside the box. Now, number four is know what you want, because everything I said here, there is a big, big exception. That is, if you are doing something you are absolutely passionate about. Okay, if you are doing something you are so passionate about. Then forget about all the rules because you're already living a good life, right? If you're doing something, if your job,、uh, if you're waking up every day so excited, can't wait to go to your workplace or to work, I don't care what it is. Hey, there, you're already successful, right? You, you're already living every day with passion. If you are doing that, then forget about all the rules because that's the biggest exception. Then that means if you're a school teacher. If you're teaching elementary school, high school, every day you open your eyes with enthusiasm to teach. Then who cares if you making seventy five thousand dollar a year? Like that's because the, the amount of money cannot equal the amount of happiness you're getting from this fulfillment, right? So same thing if you are,、uh, if you're a mother or whatever you do, right? If you're athletes, doesn't matter how much money you're making, if you feel passionate. About what you're doing every day, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's already a good, good formula for a successful life. Okay, so know what you want. This is very important. Actually, this one should be the first. This one should be the first because you really need to. Let me let me put it. This one should be the first. Know what you want. Okay. Ah, the number is messed up. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, number five is last one is you have to know the price for success. Why? Because the thing that people don't understand whenever I give this kind of talk、uh, in a seminar is that it sounds very exciting, right? It sounds very exciting to do something that's completely different than your parents' generation. It sounds exciting that you can just go to develop an apps. A P P, and then and then you become the next millionaire, 
If something excited, you go to trade, and you become the next multimillionaire traders. However, it's not the case. Right? That's how the media wants you to feel. People like love to use the word overnight sensation. All the successful people that you know, none of them are overnight sensation. You just have to know that people have worked for many, many years on their own, quietly, silently, before they make it. Right, and once they make it. Uh, of course, the media would always like to make a big deal out of it, make you feel that they hit the jackpot. The truth is that it takes hard work, so you have to know the price for success. I can tell you, just for trading, for trading, if you go on all the Instagram, you go into、um, all the social media, you always see a lot of trader flashing their cars, their watch, and the message is that it's easy money. And I can tell you that's definitely not the case. Definitely not the case. It 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 took a lot of years of learning to become not successful to become stable in this game of trading, right? And people like to sell you those kind of、uh, lies that you can just sign up the brokerage account and next year you're gonna be a multimillionaire. And the same thing happened in real estate, right? People like to tell you, you know, go to flip the house, you can you can you can make it. Next year you're gonna be a millionaire. It happened to everywhere. It happened to you know back then people would go on eBay selling stuff. So you're gonna be an eBay millionaire. So know the price for the success, right? It's not an easy work. It's a very hard path. So that's why you first you need to know what you want, because most multimillionaire I know they are very extreme. In some area, in in terms of their success, that means it's a huge sacrifice, right? I can tell you honestly,、uh, you have to sacrifice a lot of other things if you want to make it big. You have to sacrifice a lot of things in life. So, is that good or bad? I don't know, and that's why you need to know what you want in life first before you commit to anything else. Okay, so that's pretty much it.、Uh, I hope you learned something in this quick lesson of the day. And once again, if you want to listen to audio version of it, you can go to SoundCloud. Otherwise, it will be published on YouTube as well. Other than that, you know, safe trading. Don't forget, it's Thanksgiving in the U.S., so think liquidity market. Be very careful about that. All right, thanks, guys. Bye bye.